Hi and welcome to Sozo Healing, a program about soul healing. Today in the studio we have Yvonne with us. Hi Mina. Hi Yvonne. We're talking about the power within you. I'm your host Mina Atiyah and we are exploring today why people get saved and then they have soul issues, soul diseases and body ailments as well and then we are not released into the full calling of what God has called us to be and do. What is the issue with our soul? Yeah, and so Mina, we, as you said, we named this episode, Release the Power Within You. You know, we did speak about once you're born again, you have been made instantly perfect. Yes. Everything that you need within your soul, your spirit has been deposited. There is nothing else that you are getting. And so many people, the rest of the Christian life becomes, God, would you give me more blessing? God, would you give me more power? Or would you give me more anointing? Would you give me more healing? But the real understanding is because your spirit is united to Christ and because it's been made instantly perfect, you have everything you're already deposited in you. So the whole Christian journey then becomes the realization of renewing the mind, releasing the power that has been once deposited within me. So for this session, we've got three goals. And so number one, you, your born again spirit has been made instantly perfect. Number two, the pivotal role of the human soul. Yes. And number three, to release what has already been deposited. So the first part is that your spirit has totally changed completely. Your body and your soul got impacted by what happened in your spirit. However, the change is not, not, is not complete and it's not total. Mm -hmm. The change took place in your spirit. However, it's got to work through your soul. It's then got to work through your body. Your spirit totally changed. You're not in the process of trying to get a new spirit. Everything you will ever need in the journey of your Christian life has already been deposited in its entirety the minute you united to Christ. So what you want to say is when we believe in Jesus Christ and his work on the cross. Yes. God doesn't half save us, no. three quarters saves us, yes. but he completely saves us. 100%. And that happens instantly in our spirit. Yes. So what is the pivotal role of the soul? Yeah. So, I mean, when you're born again, your spirit, as we said, it's not just that it's been made new. Because it's joined to Christ, you have access to the same resurrection power that's raised Jesus from the dead. Yes. You have access to healing. You've got access to deliverance because think of it this way. It's like you and Christ have the same bank account now. You share the same mind. You mm -hmm. share the same spirit. And so everything you will ever need is already in your spirit. That's why the Apostle Paul talks about us as clay jars and we're so fragile but within the clay jar, there are treasure. And that treasure is the power of the resurrected, risen Christ in our spirit. Yeah. And so what does the life of, the, of someone that's born again look like? This is what it looks like. It consists of renewing, releasing. So my soul, which is my mind, continually renews. So for example, my body is sick. My soul saying to me, Healing doesn't, does no long, doesn't happen anymore. Yeah. But my spirit has life-giving power. That life-giving power is trapped. It cannot. Remember when we spoke the last episode that there's no access. There's no direct access between spirit and body. It's got to go through the soul. Yes. My mind, which is my, part of my soul, needs to be renewed to think Christ paid the price on the cross. The full price. The full price. Yes. By his stripes, it's not that I will be healed or I may be healed. By his stripes, I, I am healed. healed. And once the mind thinks, I got it, I got it. I am now aligning myself with my soul. Hey, but my body hurts. Yes. That's okay. My And now, Mina, we end up in a position where there's two against one. And we're, we live in a world where the majority rule. Two against one, 
My body is neither good nor bad. Mm -hmm. My body follows the direction of my soul. Amen. So we want to make this clear that according whatever you feed, whatever you get a revelation into is what is going to transpire. We can be strong in our spirit and have a revelation of what Jesus Christ himself has done on the cross, redeemed us, fully paid the price for our spirit, our soul and our body. But what happens is we look at the reality of things and then we are challenged. But you were just saying that it's, it's a three compartment, so there's always going to be an unequal yes. side to it. Yes. So can you explain that to us? Sure. So Mina, once you're born again, your spirit has been made instantly perfect. Yes. The change took place in the spirit, not in the soul, not in the body. Now, the soul is so important because it's between the two. If my soul begins to believe the word of God through renewing the mind, so I begin to understand that Christ is my healer, that Christ is my deliverer. And what tends to happen is that my soul joins with my spirit against my body. Yes. My body ends up following. The power is in my spirit. And so once my soul joins with my spirit, the life-giving power that's in my spirit is then impact, impacts my soul and then it impacts my body. Now, the danger is if the opposite happens. Yes. If the opposite happens, then this is what happens. My soul is then joined to my body. Mm -hmm. What's my body? My body goes through the five senses. Mm -hmm. So my body is if, you know, if I don't see it, I can't believe it. If I don't feel it, I can't believe it. And so then I become led by my body and not led by my spirit yes. because my soul joins with my body against my spirit. So for example, I end up, if I am sick and I won't believe that God wants to heal me. Why? Because my body feels sick. Yes. Because my body, so I'm looking at body and I'll be saying things like, I don't feel like it. I don't, well, we don't go by our feelings yes. because feel, smell, touch, all of that are the five senses. So, and then I become flesh led, not spirit led. The whole point of the gospel, even like Romans 8 and Galatians 5, be led by the spirit yes. because the spirit and the body, they're in, they're in complete battle. My spirit is, it's like God. I am now, I now look like God. I am born like his likeness. Yes. And so I have the things of God on inside of me. That's why when Jesus, before crucifixion, he said to the disciples, would you get up and pray? Yes. And they couldn't. And he said to them, the flesh is weak, weak yeah. but the body, but the spirit is willing. Yes. So this whole Christian journey is renewing my soul so that my soul can become best friends with my spirit. And so my body has nowhere to go other than to follow the direction of, of the my spirit. spirit. Amen. So this explains why some people get born again, but then they're continuously in problems and then they start to question their faith. Yes. And not only that, but it's a revelation yes. of who the real me. Yes. And once we get that revelation, then we understand the power within me. Can you explain that for us? I, I will, Mina, and I would love to put up um, a diagram. So the diagram that's going to come up mm -hmm. is going to look like three circles. And so the first one says spirit, um, then you have soul, and then you have body. So if I could explain that, the body is the part that you can feel. The soul, you can't see it, but you can feel it. But the spirit is the innermost part. It's the core of who you are. That's why we say the real you is the spirit. But notice something. The soul finds itself between the two. So they're all interrelated, but the soul is between. It's got one foot in the spirit yes. and one foot in the body. The more it gets renewed, it's going to follow the direction of the spirit. 
and it's going to become spiritual and I become led by the spirit. I no longer have to feel, smell and touch. I become spiritual. Yes. That's why people that are carnal or they follow the direction of the body, they can't understand spiritual reality because they still led by the five senses. So if I can make this very simple, soul is in the middle between the spirit and the body. That soul needs to be renewed so that it can access the power that has been deposited in the spirit. So to recap, because that's very important, that is a revelation that would set you free. That the real you is your spirit and it's made you new instantaneously once you accept the work of Jesus Christ and his salvation and full redemption on the cross. And if we are led by the Spirit, we produce life as the Bible teaches. But this happens through our soul. And the real person, the yes. power within you, yes. is the Spirit of Christ risen, yes. working through, transforming yes. your mind and your body. And Mina, the power goes from the Spirit to the soul, to the body. It yes. doesn't go the other way around. Yes. It doesn't go from the body to the soul, to the spirit. Life is in the spirit. Everything I ever need, the resurrection power of Christ is in my spirit. It's only when I realize that the journey of Christianity is to renew my mind and to believe that my spirit has been made instantly perfect. And this is the miracle, isn't it? Because God would come through His Holy Spirit yes. and breathe into us the living Spirit of God. And you become a spiritual being. You become united to the Spirit of God. And so when you are united to the Spirit of Jesus, you follow the commandments of Jesus. You obey His commandments. And that's why there is that struggle all the time. Yes. We need to take a break. Yeah. And I really want you to ponder on what we said and maybe think about the words and maybe there's words right now that are challenging you because you've accepted Christ but you are facing soul issues, you are facing a disease in your body. Let me encourage you, think about the Word of God and allow God's Spirit to transform you. Stay with us. Hi, my name is Yvonne Ateye and we developed the Sozo Soul Healing Program. When we are born again, our spirit is joined to Christ and we become instantly perfect. But our soul, which is our will, mind and emotion, go through a process of sanctification. When our soul gets healed, we end up following the direction of the spirit instead of the direction of the body. Welcome back. Before the break, we were discussing who the real person is. And we were saying that our spirit is the real me. And you explained, Yvonne, briefly that how our spirit, united in Christ Jesus, yes. influence mm -hmm. and has a direct influence on our soul. Yep. And then that translates into an influence into our bodies as well. And without that transformation, a person that is believing in Christ yes. is not fully transformed. Exactly. And Mina, you know, it will that will only happen if I allow my soul to be transformed. So many people do not even allow for that transformation to take place. Yes. And then they say, I should have been born again. Well, I'm not born again. I don't feel like being born again. Yes. And once again, we begin to use words like feel, um, smell, touch, which is trying to use our senses and trying to use, you know, come more from the direction of the flesh instead of coming from the direction of the spirit, but the real me. You know, I wanna start with a scripture from James, mm -hmm. um, chapter two and verse 26. It says that as the body without the spirit is dead. Yes. So our body without connection to the spirit, obviously through the soul is completely dead yes. because life is in the spirit. Um, when God formed Adam, he breathed into him the breath of life. 
So in Genesis 2 and verse 7, then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living being. So the Hebrew word for breath is spirit. So think about this. Adam's body was formed. Adam's soul was formed. Yes. But they did not come to life until the Spirit of God breathed into Adam's nostrils and then Adam became a living being. What does that tell me? Life is in the Spirit. Yeah. It is the Spirit that gives life to the soul and to the body. So I'm going to put up this next um, diagram and it looks like three circles. Mm -hmm. And so I've put the Spirit in the middle because since your life comes from the Spirit, it is the innermost circle and that's you. So yeah. when you look at the center, that's me. But notice something, how your spirit is completely surrounded by your soul. Mm -hmm. And not just that, it has no direct access to your physical body. Everything which comes from your spirit to your body has to go through the soul. Yes. So if I want to think about it, the soul is the road between my spirit and my body. And so this is really important if I can just picture it because it then becomes very easily to, to understand. The next diagram that I want to put up, it's called, is your valve open? Mm -hmm. And it looks, like, it looks like a cylinder and there's a valve in the, in the middle. On one side, you have your body. On the other side, you have the spirit. Now, the spirit is where life is. Mm -hmm. So you get born again. Life has been imparted to your spirit. The real you. The real you. Yes. Healing has been imparted to your spirit. Mm -hmm. Resurrection power, dunamis power, everything you will ever need for your Christian life has been deposited in, that, in your spirit. However, it cannot get to the body unless my valve is open. So the spirit is where I determine how much I want to be transformed. Yes. Some people want to be transformed a little bit. Little power would go from one side to the other. Sadly enough, Mina, so many people die with this much power in their body, in their spirit. Their body never gets it. Yes, because it's not released. It is not released. Yes. The power is trapped. And so many people live with depression whilst carrying the fruits of the Holy Spirit, love, joy, peace. So I have everything deposited in that treasure, in that, you know, it's that, in that place of, of completeness, that place of wholeness. I can live all life without even accessing it because I am not disciplining, renewing my soul to follow and to listen to the direction of my spirit. That's very profound, Yvonne, because once we understand that valve diagram, yes. once we understand that my emotions, my feelings, my mind, that's all in my soul. And if I open that, if I allow that under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, what will happen is I will see that my soul will be healed. And not only that, but what will outflow from there is that my body will see the physical manifestation of this spiritual. Yes. Healing. Yes, Mina. And you know, when you open the valve, what's in your spirit, it can flow to your body, obviously through the soul. Yes. However, depending upon how open it is, the flow of life could be just a trickle. Yes. It could be just a small amount or it can be a stream. It can even be a river. And mm -hmm. that's what Jesus said. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture says, Rivers of living water yeah. will flow from within them. Amen. Notice that word, flow from within, within them. them. So they're not searching. They're not, they shouldn't be coming to me to get more flow. And how many times do we hear people pray and say, I want more flow, God. I want more anointing, God. I want more of you, God. It, is, it has all been deposited when you got born again. Jesus knows what need, what you need for, you know, and he has deposited, it's almost like meaning he's deposited everything from now to eternity. Yes. But I'm not releasing it. It's trapped. And what is trapping it? My mind. Unless the mind gets renewed, unless my emotions get healed, unless my will 
becomes to the will of Christ, like Philippians 2, when he says that Christ is in you to will. Yes. So his will needs to unite with my will. My you know, my, my spirit is waiting. God is waiting to heal. God's waiting to free me. But my soul is standing in the middle. The, there are people who will say, God, open up the valve. I yes. open it up all and just, and what will happen is that the power of God gushes through their thinking. And all of a sudden, they're not healed yet. Their body is still sick. Yes. But they're saying, I believe that God is my healer. Yes. Or I believe that God's my deliverer. They are struggling with their finances, but they'll come and say, I believe in Jehovah Jireh, the God who is my provider. And as soon as I declare that, Romans 10, 9, if you declare something with your mouth and you believe it with your heart, you're saved. How yeah. does it happen? The two Align. are aligned together. The body has nowhere to go but to be healed because it's receiving so much power from my spirit. And this so much power, this is what I want to get back to because this is very critical to this whole episode. Yeah. That when Jesus renews us and deposits his healing spirit power, it is the spirit of the resurrected Lord. And so God could have easily, Jesus could have either easily brought the church forth before his ascension and yes. resurrection. Yes. But he didn't. No. He made sure yeah. that the power that we get yep. is the power of the resurrection, yes. the resurrected Jesus. And yes. that power yes. is on the inside of us. It just depends on how much of the valve we want to open and submit under the authority and obedience of the Holy Spirit as to how much we receive. And we know that God gives the Spirit with no measure. Yes. And that is available to us. But that's what makes the difference yes. between someone completely walking in the purposes of God yes. and the callings of God yes. and seeing the fruit of what Jesus has done and someone else who is not as renewed yes. and they've just accepted the Lord, but they're living with an unrenewed mind. Exactly. And Mina, that verse is powerful, which is John 7, 38, because Jesus says, whoever believes, where does belief happen? In mm. the mind. Mm. There's been already rivers deposited within. He didn't say that when you believe, I will deposit. No, he's actually saying that the rivers are within. Yes. Now, we've got to remember that your, our spirit has Christ's resurrection power. So that valve needs to open so that the power can flow within. All that resurrection life and power can stay locked up inside of us if we do not open up the valve. So for example, I could, you know, receive a bad doctor's report and I can come and say, I'm sick, yes. my body hurts, and there's the doctor's report to prove it. Even though you have the resurrection power of God in your spirit, your soul can keep it shut yes. so that not one drop of life-giving power can ever touch your physical body. Mm. And this is when we see so many believers and they die. The healing never gets to touch their physical reality because my soul is standing in the middle, shutting the door so the rivers of power that is in my spirit I'm not going anyway, mm -hmm. and I will die with that. And so my prayer today is for the renewing of the mind. This whole um, episode is about realizing that the power, everything you ever need has already been deposited. And it's all about renewing my mind and releasing it. Renewing the mind, releasing the power that is within me. So how about we release that over people right now? If you're hearing this, if you're hearing this teaching, I want to release that over you because the victory begins when we pray and release the mind. Yes. So let's just pray. Wherever you are, just relax. We're going to invite Holy Spirit to just come. Take a few moments. Just stop doing whatever you're doing. Holy Spirit, come and bring healing to my soul. And so I just want to invite Holy Spirit to just show you right now 
uh, the stubborn areas where the soul is shutting that valve and it's not allowing the power of God to flow through. It could be the way you think, it could be fear, it could be doubt, whatever it is, I want you right now just to identify the stubborn areas where that valve is not opening. And so once we do that, we need to speak to those areas. And so if it is fear, I just want you to say in the name of Jesus, I get rid of my fear. Or if it's doubt, in the name of Jesus, I believe the words that you have spoken over me. And so once we do that, I want you to speak to your soul and just say, my soul, I need you to follow the direction of my spirit. I align my soul, I align my mind, I align my emotions, I align my will to follow the direction of my spirit. I release the power of God that is within my spirit to flow through my soul and to impact my body right now. If you're sick right now, this is the time to open up your hands and to allow the power of Christ in your spirit to flow through your soul and into your body. So Father, I thank you, Lord, for those that are watching. And I just pray, Father, that they would discover the power of Christ that is in their spirit. And Lord, that they'd learn to release right now, God, the power that's in their spirit through their soul and into their body. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Thank you, Yvonne. Thank you for watching this episode the power within you. I pray that you have been blessed. Amen.